second ranked Bordeaux, third ranked Piedmont. They've combined for 1,216 wins, nine state titles, never been until tonight in the 3 8 quarters. That is Chris Javion Lark, who goes 70 yards for the touchdown. That put Gordo up 7 0. The Piedmont Bulldogs looking to answer in the red zone, and it's Jack Hayes firing to Ishmael Bethel. And then Bethel has the ball stripped. It goes up in the air, and it's picked off by the Green Waves' Cole Somerville. Now the Piedmont offense coming back. Hayes hands off to Raleigh Pinto. And that ball is stripped and recovered by Gordo. Another red zone turnover. Then Piedmont Sloan Smith attempting the field goal. It's a bad snap. Gordo led 7-0 at the half, but Piedmont came back to win it. 27-14 to move into the semis. Thompson and Hoover have met before. Twice every year, in fact, since 2017. Number one, Hoover beat third-ranked Thompson a month ago. To win the region title, they meet again in the 7A semis. Late in the first is the Thompson ground game. A.J. Green barrels his way for a huge game. Warriors now in the red zone as Green will walk it in up the middle. And Thompson was up 10 to nothing. Man, they came out with an edge tonight. Thompson inside the buck five. Michael Dujon goes in for the score. Tops are rolling 17 to nothing. Right before the half, the Bucks try to get something going, but Noah Schubach picked off by Anquan Fagans. A pick six is 24 to nothing at halftime. The Warriors. Second half, Bucks with a new quarterback. Brewer Smith airs it out to Jordan Woolen. Hoover's on the board. It's 24 to 7. The Bucks now deep in their own territory. And Smith will botch the snap. Can't get a grip on the ball. Jake Ivey makes him pay. Gets the sack for the safety. Warriors up 26-7. And now Corbin Williams with the end around. Cuts it back up the middle. He'll go 80. Thompson wins 40-10. to The Warriors go into the state title game for the fifth year in a row. So proud of our kids tonight. I'm so proud of our coaches the week we had. Um, we took a hit to our pride earlier in the year and uh, our kids just kept working and working and working and man I just say God is good and, and we got great great kids and I'm just proud of our program I'm proud of Wade Wade coaching him has done a great job over this year they got a really good football team it was our night I think the coaches had a lot of trust in me um, I definitely believed in our team that we can make it all the way all the way to state um, I couldn't have done it without my coaches without my line my whole team defense running backs receivers and most of all Zach Sims I mean he's really just been the man behind behind the scenes everywhere. I mean he's he's been my moral support. He's been he's been my he's been my role model. He's been everything to me. He's like a big brother to me. Trent Seaborn just an eighth grader, the winning quarterback tonight, giving credit to the backup Zach Sims there. So it's going to be Auburn and Thompson in the 7A championship game. The Tigers beat CPC 14 to 13. They'll play for the 7A title Wednesday, November 30th at Jordan Hare. The 6A bracket really opened up when Parker knocked off defending champ Clay Chalkville. So many good teams like Mountain Brook hosting unbeaten Hartzell in a quarterfinal showdown. Mountain Brook from the Hartzell 47. Cole Gamble, what a year he's having. 47 yards on the touchdown and it's 7-0 Sparty. Now Hartzell with a quick answer and it's Rye Fletcher. And Fletcher will break a couple of tackles and dash him for the score. The tied at seven. This was an offensive shootout in the first half. Spartan's offense was unstoppable. John Colvin throws to Clark Sanderson, who gets down to the five. Next play, it's Gamble again from five yards out to make it 14 to seven Mountain Brook. And then later on, the Spartans at midfield, it's Colvin to a wide open Jackson Beatty, and it's 21 to seven Mountain Brook. And then the Spartans again on their own 12. Doesn't matter. Gamble can score from anywhere. 88 yards on the touchdown. Mountain Brook wins it 49 to 30. Sparty moving on to the semifinals. Who would they play? The winner of Muscle Shoals and Gardendale. First play of the game. Tyler Nelson for the Rockets going deep. Aiden Cups with a running catch. The shoestring tackle. He's down at the 15. And that sets up this nice run and score. Jonathan Harris, 7-0 Gardendale on top. But that would be it for the Rockets. Muscle Shoals. Devin Townsend takes the handoff and says, see ya. That tied it at seven. And then the Trojans get the ball back after a muffed punt by Gardendale. It's Towns. Townsend with a big run again. 
14 to 7. Schultz, second quarter now, fourth and goal. Cole Woods will keep it and run in for the score. And Muscle Schultz wins it 31 to 7. Other half of the 6A bracket, man, Homewood losing a heartbreaker in overtime. They were down 28 to nothing in this game, but clawed their way back, but loses 57 to 56. In the 4A quarters, two programs with great winning tradition, Deschler and Aniana, have combined to win seven state titles. The Redskins hosting the Tigers from Tuscumbia away. And check it out on the first play from scrimmage. Landon Abernathy hands it to Fluff Bothwell, and Fluff will take it to the house 70 plus yards, and that made it 7 0 Aniana. The Redskins defense came to play too. Cameron Pendleton with the strip. The ball is recovered by Josiah Coover. And then Abernathy will roll right. He'll look and he'll hit Tegan Hill for the first down. And that'll set up the second TD of the night. It's the big man, Fluff Bothwell again, manhandling his way into the end zone. Now, 47 seconds to go in the first quarter. Once again, it's Fluff. And it is touchdown number three of the half. Aniana led 41-7 at the break and they win it 62-20. So Aniana will face the winner of Which Cherokee County and Randolph. And that one played in Huntsville tonight. Randolph's Nick Strong is strong. Caps off the game's opening drive with a trip to the end zone. Raiders jump in front, but the Warriors ground game not too shabby either. Jacob Cornejo following his blockers to open space and then it's going to be a foot race. So throw a couple of stiff arms and jukes in for good measure and Cherokee County wins a big road game 35-21. That's the north bracket. How about the south bracket? Unbeaten second rank Aniston hosting Andalusia. Second drive of the game for the bullet for Aniston. Cameron Sandlin finds Jalen Cunningham on the swing pass. Cunningham goes in at 7-0 Aniston. After forcing a three and out, Aniston gets the ball back. They're cooking again. And Cunningham will take it on the direct snap. Get into the end zone. 14 to nothing. Aniston getting some help from the big fellas there. How about a little more Jalen Cunningham? He'll make a great catch down the sideline. He'll stay in bounds and take it the rest of the way for his third TD of the first half. Aniston up 21 0. And now, one of the last plays of the half, Andalusia's Caden Denson will intercept the pass. Looks like he's going to go in for a pick six. This is an Andalusia pick here. But he fumbles the ball going into the end zone. Aniston recovers for a touchback. Do we have a final score on this one? This one was going to overtime. Andalusia wins it 35 to 28, the final there. So Andalusia gets the winner of Hanley and number one in unbeaten Montgomery Catholic. The Hanley Tigers would strike first on their first drive of the game. It is Jay Haynes who go in for the touchdown at seven nothing, but the Knights would answer. Quarterback Caleb McCrary will keep it himself and Caleb with very athletic moves there. Montgomery Catholic wins it 21-14 the final. All right, up next, we'll check on the action in 1A through 3A, and we'll also break down what happened in 5A. Unstoppable Ramsey going against immovable leads, and also the Pleasant Grove Spartans hosting ARAB. We'll be right back. Five-A quarterfinals, third-ranked Pleasant Grove hosting ARAB in its first-ever quarterfinal game. On the first drive, the Spartans, Eric Hanley, Takes the high snap, fakes on the play action, hits Rashad Sager for a Pleasant Grove score. And then on Arab's first possession, Aiden Cox will throw into traffic, and the Spartans will pick it off. Nathan Lavender with a turnover there. And that sets up Pleasant Grove in the red zone where Cam Wormley out of the Wildcat will escape and get the touchdown. 14-0 Pleasant Grove. Knights answer though with Aiden Cox handing the ball off to Drake Franklin, who will get Arab on the board. Still down 14-7 though. And then Pleasant Grove answers back with a big run to the outside by Aiden Hall. Spartans went up 20-7 in the second, and they won it in double overtime, 41-38 the final. So Pleasant Grove got the winner of second ranked Leeds and fourth ranked Ramsey. Ramsey averaging 42 points per game, Leeds only giving up 10 per game. First half along the leads, the Green Wave turn a Ramsey turnover into points. Senior Jeremiah Hunter 
goes in from seven yards out. Leeds was up 16 to seven at the break. Second half action, here come the Rams. More specifically, Ashton Ashford. That cut the lead to 19 to 13. And now the play that turned all the momentum. Third down screen from Leeds, but Miles Jones fumbles at the Rams, jump on the ball, all sorts of chaos, but Ramsey will take over on the fumble. Little later on in the fourth, it is going to be Ashton Ashford again, this time from six yards out. And Ramsey finally has the lead. The two-point conversion is unsuccessful. Ramsey up by one. They scored again to make it an eight-point game, and then with under 20 seconds to go, leads fourth and goal from the five. Jared Latta trying to keep the play alive, but he is sacked. That'll do it. Ramsey wins it 27 to 19. The Rams go into the 5A semis. We've been leaning on our defense all year long, and when I say they came to game, they came today to play ball, man. Um, I, I can't say much about this group, man. They always find a way to win, so I'm just elated. I'm, I'm proud. I'm excited. I'm just, I'm just happy, man. Happy, and so we gotta always find a way. So right now, I'm, I'm just extremely excited, man. I, we found a way tonight, so I'm excited for my guys. Man, I just told them, just stay down, stay down. You never know what happened. You never know what happened. So I had to put the team on my back and get in the end zone, and that's what I did. I told them, calm down. Adam Fawcett has done an amazing job with the B.B. Comer program. When he took over in 2018, the Tigers had had 16 straight losing seasons. After going 2-8 and eight his first season, he's gone 6-6, six 9-2, and 10-3, six, and 10-2, and 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 hosting Realtown in the 2A quarters. And the visiting Rebels would strike first. Arthur Woods got the score. They'd go for two and be stopped. B.B. Comer answered back with a touchdown. A couple of drives later, Devin Harvey finds the corner off the bootleg. And they would also go for the two-point conversion, and they did convert with an identical play here, and B.B. Comer led it 8-6, to six. and the home crowd loving it in Sylacauga. And then number 23, Kamori Harris would bounce it outside, get the eight-yard touchdown to give Comer a 14-8 lead, and B.B. Comer's going to the 2A semis, winning 28-22. So B.B. Comer will play Highland home in the semifinals. The Flying Squadron beat Clark County 19-0. Now let's look at the 2A North bracket. Tuscaloosa Academy at number one five tonight. Pick it up with the Red Devils driving. Logan Anderson goes in. It's a 7-0 lead for five. T.A. would respond with a score of their own, but the Red Wave kept on rolling. Blake Dobbins on the naked bootleg. Hits Evan Chandler. Red Devils roll 35-7. Let's stay up on Sand Mountain for Aliceville and Pisgah. The winner would get five. And uh, Pisgah came out with a purpose. Legion McCrary will take the handoff. He just walks in for the early lead. But Aliceville would respond. Tigerian Williams on the quarterback keeper. Powers his way in, but Pisgah wins it 26-22. One of the strongest playoff programs in this state resides in reform. Pickens County is 23 and six in playoff games since 2016. Former Crimson Tider Michael Williams leading the Tornadoes against region rival Marion County in the 1A quarters. After a turnover by Marion County's Marcus Giles, finds Xavier Hood for a 49 yard touchdown for the Tornadoes. And then Giles back to pass again. This time he finds Zachary Boone all alone in the end zone to go up 14 to nothing. Pickens driving again, and Giles is going to get picked off here by Dallas Floyd, who will take it all the way back for the Red Raiders on the pick six. A 14-7 Tornadoes lead, but Pickens County advances 40-14. Hey, at one point, Coosa Christian was 2-4 and four this season. They've won six in a row, heading into a 1A quarterfinal game with Lynn. Lynn's first possession, Benjamin Kelly plows through to the end zone. 7-3 Bears. Coosa strikes back to Kara Mostella goes in for the score. But then Lynn would answer. Matthew Kale Tittle passes to Crimson Adamson. Final score in this one, it was Kusa Christian winning 46-29.